Bob Hoover has mentored young people for over 40 years in East Palo Alto. He started as a little league coach, then he opened an after-school center for teens. He counseled Ravenswood High School students. He founded Nairobi College, the first African-American junior college in the country. He created a junior golf program for 10 to 12 year olds and ran it for 15 years. Now he coordinates the parole re-entry program at Free at Last. He served in the Air Force when it was first becoming integrated and he went on to study at Penn State and at Stanford. All of this being most unlikely given that he was raised in the 30s by his grandparents in rural, segregated North Carolina. So what do you attribute the fact that you didn't go the way probably a lot of your childhood friends went? I got lucky, because I dropped out of school in the ninth grade. And there happened to be a couple of teachers. I had not been in their classroom for four years. And uh, my mother was in Pennsylvania. They wrote my mother and told her I was not in school. Let and me just interrupt you there. Why did you drop out? Uh, I thought I was going to be a Major League Baseball player, and I knew all I needed to know up to, as far as education was concerned. And I ran into a math class that I didn't like. <laughs> Haven't we all? <laughs> so you dropped out, right? and your mother heard about it. Yes. And she came and got me and took me back to, uh, and put me in a boarding school in New Jersey, Bordentown, New Jersey, a military boarding school. And uh, I met a man there who literally uh, certainly changed my life, he may have saved my life. But uh, during the, the year that I was there as a 14-year-old kid, he helped me to understand the relationship between the future and the present and what I needed to do to, to have goals and set goals and, and how to put together a plan to reach them. And uh, I think that's, that's, that's definitely was a major change in my life. It sounds so simple, but it's so important, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, you, you had another big turning point in the military, it sounds like. You had another mentor. Yeah. Uh, the, mil the military time was a, was a kind of an interesting time. I, I, I was a gunner, F aircraft gunner, and uh, I managed to stay at Lowry Air Force Base as, as an instructor, but I played baseball. And uh, the guy, there was a guy who was a coach of the baseball team, was a big influence on me. And I had some interesting racial experiences at that situation. Uh, and I think, I, I remember we went to a restaurant one time in Cheyenne, Wyoming. It was 25 of us. This is the team, the baseball, the baseball team, team, but it was the Air Force baseball Air Force, team. we were all dressed in our uniforms. And we're going to this restaurant, and they serve everybody but me. I'm the only black guy on the team. And so we're finished, almost finished eating. And I look around, and I don't have any food. So I asked the waitress to come over, and she said, well, we don't serve you in here. And I, the most impressive thing about that was the way in which the coach of the team handled that situation. Uh, and I, I learned a lot from that. What did he do? He, he called, he went to see the manager of the, of the restaurant and uh, expressed his extreme displeasure with the way in which they handled it. And then he just told everybody to get up and we all left without paying. He didn't rant and rave, he didn't go crazy, and you know, he just expressed his displeasure with the situation and then uh, retaliated in a different kind of way. So how did that translate for you? How did that inform what you became? Well, I, I, that, that one incident, and, and I had a couple of other racial incidents similar to that, but all of them were handled in a way that did not require people going crazy and acting stupid. Uh, it, it showed me that we have to really work together and live together and be productive as people. And even though I had been born and raised in the South in a very extreme racist situation, uh, that there were ways of dealing with it with dignity. And I think that was a big thing that I learned from that. And so that's been a kind of a theme of mine throughout the rest of my life. Well, now, I'd like to talk a little bit about the program that, that you're working in right now, Free at Last, because this is a fairly well-defined population. Right. Tell me who these people are that you're working with and what they bring to you. Okay. We are obviously getting people who are coming out of prison. Many of them have spent many, many years in prison. Some started going to jail as early as 12, 13 years old. 
And so they come with uh, having lived in a situation where almost every moment of their life was controlled and dictated by someone else, by, the, by an institution. And so uh, one of the things that we have to do is help them to really begin to understand how to live in the society that, they, that they're now faced with. And when they come out and they don't know how to, to, to get through these bureaucracies that they have to deal with. And so we, part of our responsibility is to help them to learn how to deal with bureaucracies, learn how to go for a job interview, learn how to fill out an application, all of those things that we take for granted. Learn how to have a bank account and to manage money and take care of your credit. And I mean, it just goes on and on. It's part of my whole thing. I, I often talk to them about, you need to be able to, to think about your whole life and, and think that you're gonna live forever. That's one of my favorite comments. So you plan your life as though you're gonna live forever. So don't ever place limits on what you think you can do.